Okay. And let me share my screen here. Okay. All right, so 6.3. We're going to talk about definite integrals and anti derivatives. So we, we, we've learned derivatives. Now we're sort of going to go backwards and we're going to learn anti derivatives. Um, <clears throat> okay, so let's just do a quick reminder, right? So suppose you had an integral like this. Um, that goes from, let's say, oh, I don't know, three to five, right? Of two dx, right? Remember what that stood for? We were just looking for the area underneath the equation, underneath the graph from three to five. So in this case, um, a graphical representation of that is, this is y equals two, and I'm looking for the area in the region from three to five, right? And so what we had said is if I have an integral f of x dx, f of x was my integrand, and I had my upper and lower limits, right? Three and five. And remember that this and this come together and they leave together, okay? They're, they're buddies. All right, so let's talk about some of the properties first. First off is order of an integration, all right? Here I have, look at what I have here. I have the integral, right, of b to a, right? b to a, f of x dx. That's when the order of the limits is reversed. That is the negative of the integral from a to b. So for example, remember how I had my integral here going from three to five, right? Suppose I had that written as the integral of two dx from five to three, right? Higher number to the lower number. That is the negative of my integration there right? It's, it's going in the negative direction, okay? All right, um, a zero. So if I'm integrating from a to a, right, there is nothing, there is no area, so the integral is just zero, no thinking involved. Um, a constant multiple, we've talked about this. If you have a constant inside the integral, you can take it out, and it'll just be the constant times the integral. Now, if you have f of x plus or minus g, you can just separate the integrals, integral of f of x plus integral of g of x. These are just the properties. It's like when we do like associative cumulative, cum, cum, what was it? Commutative, <laughs> right? And then, um, you don't really get anything out of it until you're using it. That's pretty much this. Um, this is important, like the additivity. If you have an integral from a to b of f of x dx, okay, from a to b, then you have another one from b to c. Well, what is this? This is the area from a to b added to the area from b to c, so it's the lump area from A to C, okay? Now, the only, okay, you can only do this if this and this are the same, right? So if it's like A to B and then C to D, uh-uh, you can't do it. Okay, let's just apply some of these, right? Okay, so look at what we have here. Suppose the area from negative one to one of some function is five. And then the integral from one to four is negative two. And the integral from negative one to one of h of x, different function is seven, right? We're gonna use that to do these. I love these because they're like little pieces of a puzzle that you put together, right? 
So what I want to do now is look at this first one. What is the integral from 4 to 1 of f of x dx? Well, that's just the negative of 1 to 4, right? So you say that's the negative of the integral from 1 to 4 f of x dx, and that's 2. Do you have to show work? Yes, you do, and that's what work you show, what I have over there. All right? Okay, next, I have the integral from negative 1 to 4 of f of x dx, right? Okay, so what do I have given to me? I have the integral from negative 1 to 1, and then I have a separate one from 1 to 4, so this is the combined sum. So I say this is the integral from negative 1 to 1, f of x dx, plus the integral from 1 to 4, f of x dx. That is 5 plus negative 2, 3. Isn't that cute? Right? Okay, look at what I have here. I have the integral from negative 1 to 1 of f plus h, right? I got to separate these. So this is the integral from negative 1 to 1 of f of x dx plus the integral from negative 1 to 1 h of x dx. I can do that because of the properties up top in the table. And now, remember though, each of these must get its own dx, right? Okay, what's the first integral? 5. Second integral? 7. 12. Okay, here. 0 to 1 f of x dx. Well, I have negative 1 to 1. So the area from negative 1 to 1 is 5. But I have no way of knowing what the area is from 0 to 1. Right? So there is not enough info. OK. What about negative 2 to 2, h of x dx? Can we just say that's double negative 1 to 1? No. So not enough info. Oh, what's going on here? OK, I have negative 1 to 1, some version of f of x and then minus an h of x, right? So that's three times, I'm gonna skip that step, three times the area from negative one to one of f of x, which is five, minus seven, eight. Okay. Questions? No, yes, no. Okay. Um, and now we have a little bit more of this like looping back and forth. This page is from 7.2. Um, again, the book does it in another order. It's fine, but I like to do it this way. So let's talk about what an indefinite integral is. Um, an indefinite integral is the family of all antiderivatives of a function. Okay? All right, so let's, let's talk about this for a minute. Suppose you have f of x is, I don't know, x squared, right? Okay. What's f prime of x? We know this, it's 2x, right? That's the derivative, correct? So now, the integral, we're told, is the antiderivative of this. So that means, how do I go back? 
So now if I do the integral of 2x dx, supposedly, it's the antiderivative. Supposedly, it's supposed to take me back to the antiderivative. So what was, what was the function for which the derivative is 2x? Well, that was x squared, right? Yes? So I'm just going backwards. But now, what if somebody's like, hey, Miss Malikian, x squared plus 7 also has a derivative of 2x. Would they be right? They would be right. And x squared minus 7 also has the same derivative. So how many functions are there that would have the same derivative of 2x? Infinite. Infinite, infinite number. So basically, it's x squared plus any constant, right? That is the family of functions for which the derivative would have been 2x. So I started with <coughs> f of x equals x squared. The derivative is 2x. But now if I have to find a function to go back, I have to be holistic. I have to come up with all of the functions. And it's x squared plus c. OK? So what I say then is this, that the integral, right? What was 2x? It was the derivative of something, right? The integral of f prime of x dx is f of x plus c. OK? That is the second half of calculus in a nutshell. All right? So now we introduce a capital letter F. If capital F is any function such that f prime is f, right? then we say the integral of f of x is capital F of x plus c. So basically, it gets rid of the negative, uh, the, the prime, right? So the integral of the derivative is the main function, OK? The main function is capital F, OK? The derivative is little f. And the integral of the derivative is the main function, where c is an arbitrary constant. OK? So properties. Um, we've done the first two already. OK, let's go to the power formulas. How do we do this? OK. Um, remember how when we had you know, f of x is equal to x squared? the power to take a derivative was the two would come down and then you subtract one from the exponent. Now we would have to press rewind and do the opposite. So you add one to the exponent and you divide by the new exponent. So integral u to the n du, you add one to the exponent, right? You rewind and then you divide by the new exponent plus c. So for example, integral x to the 8 dx. OK, what do we do? Add 1 to the exponent, get a 9. Divide by the new exponent plus c. OK, when you take a derivative and go backwards, do you get x to the 8? You do, right? Because 9 comes down, 9x to the 8, but then you had to have divided by 9 to get rid of it. You see how beautiful it is? Like, it's so beautiful, right? Even when I'm alone in the house talking about this to a screen, it's just as beautiful as any other day, right? <sighs> okay, now, because math is, you know, just, you know, surprise every minute, what if you have u to the negative one, right? u to the negative one, well, what's another way of writing it? It's 1 over u du, but the integral 
ln of u plus c, okay? ln of u plus c. Does that make sense? When you take a derivative of ln, do you get 1 over u? Oh my god, you do! Remember? Derivative of ln of x plus 1 over x? Yes! You have to remember to put absolute values around the u because you can't have an ln of a negative number. Okay, so plus c, right? You can't forget the plus c. Minus 1 every single time, and it can be brutal. Same with that absolute value of the ln, okay? All right, let's do some trig ones. And for the trig ones, you just have to go backwards from the derivatives. And that's why when we do the derivatives, I was like, you can use, the, you know, it's open notes, but you have to remember them. You have to memorize them for later. This is the later, okay? The, the better you have learned the derivatives, the easier this will be to not get confused. So the derivative of cosine is sine. The derivative of sine is negative cosine, right? Remember, when you go backwards, there is a negative. Now it's reversed. Secant squared is tangent plus c. Cosecant is negative cotangent plus c. Um, and then secant tangent is secant. Remember, always remember when you went backwards, the derivative of secant is secant x tangent x. and then the cosecant. Um, you have to memorize this entire thing. Oh, I meant that to be a, an asterisk. You have to memorize this. Okay? All right. Integral of e to the u, du is just e to the u plus c, right? Man, you gotta love those exponential functions. They're just so simple. It's like that one friend that you, you know, that is always like unassuming, you know, just non judgmental, you know, they're just what they are, right? That's e to the x, okay? Right? Not much to read into. Okay. okay are you guys ready to do some integrals? There is not a better way to start semester two, by the way. Okay, here we go. Definite integral. Remember the plus C. Okay, X squared, that's a power rule. Add one to the exponent, divide by the new exponent, plus C. All right, two cosine x, the two just comes out. Integral of cosine is sine plus c. If you're like, oh my God, I don't know, just go backwards. Take a derivative of what you just got. Do you get two cosine x? You do, okay? All right, how about it? e to the x, e to the x plus c. Okay, these ones we just do like we had done before, right? Like each term on its own. So add 1, divide by 4, okay? Minus 3x to the 3, divide by 3 plus 8x squared, divide by 2, plus 4x, plus c. So this is x to the 4 over 2, minus x cubed, 4x squared, plus 4x, plus c. Okay, go ahead and do e and you know what let's try f as well go ahead and do e and f i'm going to give you guys a few minutes or seconds what do you think
About a minute, maybe. A minute? Minute sounds good. Minute and, <laughs> minute and a half. Speaking of a half, for F, the easiest thing to do is to rewrite that as X to the half. Okay, who is not finished with E yet? Who is not yet finished with F? Oh, look at you guys go. All right, who wants to tell me what they got for E? Anybody? No? You want me to just do it? Yes, it's too early on a Monday morning. 3E to the X, because that doesn't change plus 2x to the 5 over 5 plus c, right? So this one, <clears throat> I write it as x to the half, right? So now I get 6x squared over 2 plus x to the half plus 1 is 3 over 2 divided by 3 over 2 plus C. But of course we can't leave as complex fractions, so that'll be 3x squared plus 2 thirds x to the 3 over 2. And soon you'll get, you know, more efficient with this and you will say, okay, if it's x to the 3 over 2 and I have to divide by that, it's just times the reciprocal plus C. Okay? Yay! All right. Ms. Malikian? Yes. Why is it plus x to the 3 over? It's not. It's minus. I missed the minus. Oh, Sorry. okay. <laughs> Sorry. I'm not even going to lie and say it was because I wanted to see if you guys are paying attention. Because it wasn't. I just missed it. <laughs> All right. Um, next one. x to the minus 2, right? You add 1. So it's x to the minus 1 over minus 1 plus c. So negative, okay, x to the minus 1 is 1 over x plus c. Okay. Integral of negative sine x, right, is just cosine x plus c. So two ways. First, Integral of sine is negative cosine, so there is an extra negative. And also, check how, when I take a derivative of cosine, do I get negative sine? I do. Okay, this is a similar situation as what we saw on top. e to the x just gives you e to the x plus x to the power of negative two thirds plus a, th a three over three, so that's one third, divided by a third plus c. So finally, that's e to the x plus three x to the one third plus c. All right, what do you guys propose we do for the next one? Would you uh, change root x to x to the one half? I would. So now that'll be four x to the three over two divided by three over two plus c. 
so that's four over three halves, that's eight over three, x to the three over two plus c. Um, a little bit about notation or when it comes to your fractions, be very, very um, uh, explicit so that like there is no ambiguity. What I mean by that is this. A lot of you guys like to write your fractions like slanted. Okay, so look, if it's an exponent, there is usually not a problem in what you mean. However, beware of this. Some of you guys are doing this. This can be misinterpreted as 8 over 3x to the 3 over 2. So remove any doubt, any ambiguity, right? Either write the 8 over 3 as a vertical fraction or take that extra step and put in parentheses, right? Remember, it's all about being that sophisticated math student, right? You just, you just have to be, you kind of have to be like woke with all of this, right? Like, you know. Look at it from all angles. That's that's what it is. Okay. Um, right. So I'm gonna stop here today. Um, this this is normally a two day thing because we really need to digest this. Um, and the um, sorry, the homework for this is actually a handout. Yay, handout. Because I, you know, I took things from everywhere. So it's, it's a handout, 20 questions, I believe. Um, and it really, it shouldn't take, it should take about, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes. Okay? So, sounds good? Um, okay, so with that,